All right, time for another video. So I figured I would just, you know, make the mic hot, um, start recording because what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be under the hood. I gotta do some maintenance to one of my programs here. And I figured the user form layers machine. Um, and I figured I would just document it. And you guys can watch it, you know, for those, you know, the new people, appreciate the new subscribers, that's great. Um, you know, but if you uh, just sit and drinking coffee or drinking tea, doing your thing, wanna watch, wanna nerd out, um, I just figured I'd show you how it is that I update and make changes. There's a few things that I noticed um, that are <laughs> buggy about it. This is one of the very first things I've made when I was starting out getting macros going. I'm like, oh, look what I can do. So some of the code's a little wonky. I found some bugs on my drop down menus that I want to fix. Um, it is always a pain in the booty to actually break open the code and fix it. I have appreciation now for software developers who have to fix bugs. It's a pain in the butt. You don't want to have to go in. It's just a chore. Um, so I file tickets for myself and then I moan and groan. So usually ones and twos fine. I call I, it's like having a rock in your shoe. You know, you try to ignore one and you try to put up a two, but eventually you got five or six rocks in your shoe. You got to stop and pull over and fix it. So there's a few things I want to change. So I figured I would just let you guys watch, see how it's done. So for those uh, new to the show, basically we use layers. I mean, I know natively, organically, um, both Adobe products and Corel use layers. As you can see here, you got layer one. They use layers to turn on and off and hide things when you're producing things. I don't do that because it actually gets very difficult to work with multiple layers when you have thousands of, of, of shapes. So when I'm working and creating things, I only have one layer and that's fine. But what I found early on is that you can export layer information to a DXF file. A .DXF file is what we send to our router department. What that gave birth to is being able to send information to the router department and say, hey, I want this layer, I want this layer to be this bit, I want this layer to be this depth, I want this layer to be, you know. So I discovered the layers early, but what that meant is having to push this button and create a new layer, and then you had to go here and hit rename, and then you had to sit there and type what you wanted that to be. And that was such a hassle because there's usually five or six layers, seven layers sometimes per document that I'm sending with the DXF. So once I learned how to write code, um, you know, thanks Stack Overflow, thanks Google, then now all I do is push this button and there's info words. I push this button, I push, these are all the router bits we wanna use. This is an on center shape reference kiss. This is a V bit reference. Um, these are our bend scribes. So these are the depths we use when we fold our metal. So that goes right there, bend scribe bit. I can open that up so you can see. So these are, if you're gonna do half inch acrylic push through, there you go, now we have a layer for that. And if you're gonna do some stud mount holes, some blind holes, those are right bottom tap stud right there. And then the island fill, this is what I am wanna fix because I have to type like an animal. You know, I'm in open warfare on my keyboard. As you know, as Danny Rojas says, you know, push button is life. So if I wanna have a island fill that uses a 532nd bit, see I have this pull down menu, then I hit that, I make layer. And so that right there is, where did it go? Do, 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 do. Uh, island fill up here. So I have island fill, one six depth. So that tells the router guy or girl or they that island fill, 0.16 depth, 532nd bit. Um, so what I wanna do though, is I wanna do a dealer's choice. So that's what I have. So that way I don't, I'm not, if I'm not read into what bit that person wants to use, I'm saying it's clear enough for you to use what you want. If I know that only a 30 second bit, 532 second bit will fit, then I choose that. Or if I know that only a 3 16 bit will fit, then I specify that to make his job easier. I'm passing all that information, looking out for my buddy to make sure that he has all the things he needs to, to succeed and make the mission go through. So, but for the most part, when I'm doing dog bones, uh, I leave it to dealer's choice and it's a 0.16. Now the problem is when I open layers machine, when I first set this up, I left this blank because I didn't have like a def default value. I didn't know, you know, and logically I have the bits go from, well, this is the usual suspect. 
but I have it just go in order of bigger and bigger till you get to dealer's choice. So much like when you set up a park and you have a bunch of grass, you think you're gonna put the sidewalks in and you think you know where people are gonna go, but it isn't until people start to walk on the grass do you realize, well, no, let them tell you where it goes. So logically, this is how I have this set up. But what I'm finding is every time that I open layers machine, I end up, when I, got, when I have dog bones, I have to go 0.16, gross, and then I have to go scroll, 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 scroll to dealer's choice. So I just wanna rearrange this a little bit to where dealer's choice is top. And so I mean, it's my default, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a default value for 1.6, and that's gonna fix that. The other one here is that this list dropdown is pretty much everything we ever need, for me anyway. But I just realized that I do want to do a 0.27 depth for 09, but there's no way for me to make a custom here. The only way I can do this is make this layer, and then I go over here, and then I have to hit rename, and this is, you know, again, gross. Who does this? You know, this is no way to live. You know, we, we're, we're a civilization now. We, don't, we shouldn't have to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this array to include 0.027. What I'd like to do, I'm not going to do this now because I got get, you know, I got things I got to do to get back to it. But uh, what I'd also like to do is 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 do some new construction at some point and add fully customizable. So I'd like to make three menus where it'll have the material drop down, it'll have the bit drop down, and then I can set the depth. So I can do three three basic parameters and then make a layer that's completely custom that comes out like this. Right now, all this is doing is taking this string and just adapting it and sticking it there. So it's a finite choice, but it's, it's, it's easy for me to go in and you know fix it. But this was the final rock in the shoe. I wanna rearrange these buttons so they make a little more sense as far as what I need. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna update this list and I'm gonna update this a little bit. The other thing I need to do though, is every time I bring up Layers Machine, and this is the bug, from, it's kind of cute, because I didn't know what I was doing. Every time that we populate these lists, these lists actually refill and refill and refill. So you can see how long this list is going. You can see the re the, the repeats. So the, uh, the 080 depth and the 063 depth, you see it keep repeating. Yeah, this is because I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, you're supposed to clear the box, then re repopulate it. So every time this thing reappears, you can see how long this is. <laughs> and then you can see how long this is. So I need to fix that bug, because every time you bring up Layers Machine, it keeps adding to the list, so. All right, so let's get after it. So what we're gonna do is you go to your scripts here. We don't need you. Uh, thank you for your service, we can put you back. I have that all on my second screen there. There really isn't a good way to capture that second screen. I can only capture basically one screen at a time. I've looked into it, but otherwise it's a lot of editing, and I just don't have time for editing. So, show IED under your scripts, Docker, and then you're gonna bring the, right there. So this is the um, integrated development environment. Um, and then, so go over here to your list of user forms, and we're gonna to go to layers machine, layer machine. So this is what the user form looks like in its like construction phase. None of the lists are filled out. None of the lists are able to be filled out until you run code to fill them with what's called an array. So you set up a variant, I'll show you that, and then you just put in, a, it's like a little container. You fill it with everything you want it to say, and then when the code runs, when this thing first fires up, it will fill each of these boxes with what you want. So I need to fix that and get that, get that in the proper order. So, but while we're here, the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna rearrange these buttons. Um, I have this one pink and I have this one pink because those are the usual suspects. I hit info words first, I have to have info words, and I have to have one of these. And then usually 532nd is the king, and then I just leave the rest to whatever bit. That's basically dealer's choice, you, you figure it out. Um, very rarely do we use a, a 16th bit, very small. You know, it, it's only in, in necessary times when we're engraving something. We don't wanna go that small usually. Sometimes a, an eighth inch bit is required to really get in there, um, but these two I hardly use. Uh, the 3 16 bit is actually right behind 532nd. I, if, it's, if it's a trifecta, it's these three. So I wanna make sure, and then so, so because those 6 is in the way, 
and I don't use it a lot, I want to change that. So I'm going to just going to make some room because you can't like drag this button over here into white space. It has to be on the user form. So I'm just going to drag this over a little bit to give myself a template. It's a little place to work, a little palette. So I'm going to drag this out of the way, just that simple. And I'm going to get eighth inch bit out of the way. So these are, these are not the usual suspects. So I'm going to go ahead and do the three, the trio. I'm going to put them together here. So that way I can just kind of go bam, bam, bam. Those are the usual ones. And then I will just keep these in descending order like that. Oh, we'll line them up with that. There you go. So just that simple, just something like that makes it easy. Um, I've just got these three here and then these guys over here. And then I'm gonna actually make quarter inch bit a different color. So I go over here to down here on the bottom we go to palette, you select it, and then now it's hot. So I'm gonna make it this orange color, and I'm actually gonna make this one the orange color. So I want those to sort of be a family. And so these guys are basically cold, let's just say, and then these are warmer, but these guys here are the ones that I use all the time. So I can just go stack, 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 and then I can hit this one. And then, actually, you know what? Let's make this one a different color as well. Uh, purple. Yeah, there you go. All right. So I like that. So this is a different family of hardly ever used. This one is, yeah, sometimes, but these three, and then this differentiates between the two. But I basically will now go info words, bam, 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 and pretty much good to go. Sometimes I can add quarter bit. I'll leave these alone. Just a little bit of a workflow thing. It's 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 cognitive overhead. It's it's cognitive load. It's mental bandwidth. However, you know trendy trendy terms you want to use. Um, so go ahead and save this. There really isn't a, a need to debug it, but because when you're working on the on this side of it, until you go into the code, um, they don't really you know Microsoft doesn't care. This is like internal to Microsoft. So if you're just moving buttons around, you just got to really make sure you save it. Um, you don't really need to debug yet. It's not until you start getting into code that you want to re re debug. So there's that. And then I don't think I need to. So I'll just kind of put this back to where I had it like that. So when it opens, we'll save that. So now I need to get inside and change how these load. So we're going to go into the arrays. Um, now, before I do that, though, I'm going to set this as a default. So I'm going to go to this text box. This is text box one right here. And I'm going to go down to value. It's uh, this is all um, alphabetic. So you go down here to value. And then I want that to be 0.16. And then hit enter. And now it's 0.16. So now when this thing fires up, I can always change it. But instead of having no value, this is essentially the value I use the most when I fire this up. So I'm setting myself up sort of for success and just making it easier. I know some people are screaming, you know, hopefully they're screaming at me and not because of something else. But um, but if you're screaming at me like, well, why don't you just make a separate button that's just dedicated to what you want? Yeah, but then again, you start making too many buttons and it just becomes very chaotic. So, um, but if I just set this up as a default and it just happens when it loads, that's good enough for me, so that's fine. So now that we got this, let's go into the code. So if you go to view, well, let's go ahead and save that. And again, you shouldn't have to debug because anything you're changing on this side is internal to Microsoft and they're like, eh, so you don't need to compile. Um, but you want to go to code. And so now this is the code for this user form. So this is the item. So you have all your command buttons, you have all your frames and you have all your labels and you have all your list box, but you go to the bottom and this deals with the user form itself. And then these are all the code choices you have for when this user form does something. So when you activate the user form, there could be code. When you initialize the thing, if you touch it, if you click the user form, you can make it do something. If you mouse up on the user form, it'll do something. So all these things you can, you can use. Uh, when you terminate it, you can have it do something right before it shuts down. You know, oh no, I'm dying. And then as it, as it goes out, it'll do something on the way out. Um, so right now though, what we want is initialize. This on every user form, when you fire up, like I got my rectangular right here, um, these lists are empty when it fires up. 
And it's not until when it quote unquote initializes does it fill these. And it does it very quickly. It's almost magical. It happens instantaneous. You don't even know it. Um, but you have to go into initialize here. So that's what we're going to do. Initialize. And you can see where these are all my codes. And so this is as, so every time this thing fires up, it runs this code. And it fills all the boxes with various values um, using um, arrays. Um, so, so this is what's funny is when I first started to learn all this, um, I didn't know about, you know, again, it was just Stack Overflow and Google. Thanks, guys. Um, but I forgot that you need to clear the box before you reload it. That is why we keep getting these massive lists. So you can see where um, for, and, and it's funny because it's my code. I don't worry about, you know, putting comments and labeling things because I can usually figure it out. But you can see where list box five works okay. List box four works okay. And all it is is because of this simple statement me, which is it's referring to the user box or the user form, list box four, clear. Then you load it. This is how to load it. So on these other ones, I just need to add this because I just forgot to put it because I didn't know what I was doing. So what I will do is what we're doing here is counter. So this is for list box three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do my declarations there. And then I'm going to go ahead and make some space. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to paste this. And then I'm going to change this to list box three because we are working with list box three here. This is all it needed to clean this out. So now every time this loads, instead of reloading this list of acrylics, you can see that's the list of st the string the array of strings that gets loaded, um, <laughs> instead of just reloading it on top of itself and creating this massive list, duh. Every time this loads, it's going to clear first. That's what should have happened. So I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to duplicate that. Same thing. I'm just going to copy paste. But on this one, we can see that this is for list box two. And it, it never got this. So we'll give it that. And then same thing here. You can see where there's no clear that and this is list box one there so now every time this initializes it'll have a clean box then it fills it so you can see that this is the array so these are all the different um, router bits and so I know that this is where I want to add so what I'm going to do is within this array so this is an item that loads I want to just modify this I'm going to go ahead and copy this but I don't want to put this this new value, I don't want it directly against the one that could possibly, I could mistake it with. Because you can see 090 aluminum 532nd bit, I want 027, but on the drop down list, if this is right next to it, I could easily get confused or, you know, if I'm just in a hurry or whatever. Plus, I'm not going to use this a lot. This is a very fringe edge corner case, whatever you want to use. Um, so, I actually use 025, 05025 bit well, a depth, and I actually use this one a lot more. I don't use this one very often. Um, so I might actually bury this. So let me just copy this again, make sure I got it right. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, but I'm gonna bury this in the list down away from its like buddy that could get confused because if it's a, Instead of 045 and we do 027, it could be a major problem with not fitting and it could be much crying in the village. It could be very bad times, um, you know. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here before the 063. So now it'll be 090, the 05, the 05, and then back to the 09. And then I'm going to go ahead and comma. And then I'm going to change the depth to 027. The reason why that's important is that's leaving a 16th. So when we scribe and leave 045, we're leaving half of the 09. That's our, that's our secret sauce. But maybe we want a bit more strength, but it changes the measurements by 02. But it's, it's a lot. It adds up. So 
Um, but anyway, so that's how I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna safety it off like that, keep it out of the list, keep it down a little bit so there's no confusion. So this is where you wanna hit save and you wanna hit debug because you can see where compile BSI is now hot and um, because we changed code. So now it wants to go through and make sure these changes we did are legit. So, so far it likes it. So I did that. So I added a value to this. And then what I'm gonna do is come down and um, I, cause I basically know these by looking at them. So I know this is our push through acrylics. So we got that fixed. Um, so this one here, now you can always go back to the object and double check. So this actually is list box five that I wanna change the value. Um, I wanna change the order of the value on that. So let's go back to the code or yeah, to the code. No, not list box five. So what it did is it thinks we wanna work with list box five. We don't want to. We wanna use work user form, go back to where we were. This is, we're, we're in the initialization phase. So we're gonna cruise, cruise. Um, so here's var four, which is variant four array. And you can see where var four is being used with list box five, there's var four. So this is our, this is what we wanna change. And you can see 532nd bit is first. I wanna just go ahead and take this. I'm just going to cut it. I'm gonna paste it up front. But I also need to then put a, there you go. And then you can see where this thing's angry. It made it all red. It doesn't like it because there's something wrong. If you tried to compile it, you're gonna get the same thing. But you can see where I left the comma. There you go. Now we're good. So now dealer's choice will be first and then it goes down into the bum, 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 bum. Uh, I have yet to do half inch bit. You know, like I say, I barely use these. So that's why it was kind of silly to put dealer's choice at the bottom. But logically speaking, it made sense when I did this years ago. But now that I, you know, like I say, now the paths are worn into the grass, we now know where to put a sidewalk. So we're good to go. So there's all that. We'll go ahead and save it. We can go ahead and debug it one more time, just to make sure, but it's grayed out, we're fine. So now let's run it. So go back to object. And now if we just kind of select the whole thing, we can hit run and there it is. So you can see now where um, dealer's choice is here. And we have push throughs. And we have our new value here, 090. 027 depth, but it's safety to weigh down the list where I won't confuse it with this one. This one is our bread and butter, but if this one's wrong, this could potentially cost a lot of money if this 045 is not 045. Um, and thankfully, sometimes it happens where this will get selected or something else will get selected and it doesn't make sense. And our router guy's like, hey, are you sure? And I'll say, hey, good catch, good catch. Um, but basically we want this to be safe 045. So that's why, so we have it down here now. So if I want a little stronger bend, I want to leave more material, I'll go down here. Like I said, eventually I'm going to update this and do, you know, add some actual full customizable um, drop downs. But anyway, so I just noticed something though. You saw that the VAR4, um, I was using the same variant for both of these lists. I do not want dealer's choice up here but I want dealer's choice here. So that means I have to go and break it apart. And cause you know, that's very, uh, it's very efficient and saves code if you can use the same drop down menu for multiple things here. But I don't want, I want dealer's choice first. I don't want dealer, I definitely want 532nd to be the hot one here. So that just means we gotta go to our IED or yeah, IDE. And so you can see where I set this up. So I can go ahead and make a comment. So if you want to make a comment, you just do that. And let's just use equal signs. Just to make it a little more clear for everybody playing along at home. Okay. So here's, here's where we have. So I'm using this variant thing for list box four and five, which is great. So really all I got to do is add one more. So if I go here and I just copy this and I paste this and I'm kind of assuming, but I don't think I have a VAR5. 
but let's go ahead and do var5. And this will make sense because if we do a var5, then we will just use var4 for list four and var5, you know, anyway. So we'll copy paste this, but we will make this var5. <clears throat> okay, now we want five to be dealer's choice first. Let's go ahead and switch this back to the way it was. Oops, it's all right. Again, open warfare. Now, if anyone thinks chat GPT can do this yet, it's getting there. I know it will, but we're not quite there yet. So var five, var five, var five. Uh, list box. So now list box five is gonna have its own thing. That's what I want. And that's gonna put dealer's choice first. Var four needs to go back to the way it was. So yeah, sometimes that's what happens. You try to fix something, break something else. Again, much respect to software engineers and <laughs> all of that. It's a pain in the booty. This is why I don't like to get into it really. It's until it's something that I really, it really grinds on me and I gotta, you know, it's like, let's just do it. So here you go, let's run it, double check it. So now I'm back to the way I like it. I want 532nd first because I use 532nd pretty much on everything here. And then we've got our list here is still good. Uh, and then also now I have a default. So now all I gotta do is push this button. I'm set up for success. Cause like I said, 99.44% of the time, ivory soap, I'm doing, you know, dog bones and I'm doing a, a 0.16 dealer's choice. So now I can just hit this button and I'm making that layer all day long. So there we go. So if we go ahead and put something onto layer one, this is kind of cool. So if I hit send it, then we can clear out all of these empty layers. So if I hit this button, so you can see send it works with all these layers instead of having to work with the, the object manager because the, the object manager got really difficult to work with once Corel made some changes. So I don't like working with the object manager anymore. So I basically have, you know how I do, I have my own thing. So this has all the layers. You can see how cruddy this is. But if I hit this button, the delete, it will automatically get rid of anything that doesn't have something on it. So if I click that, we're back to new because I have I have something on layers one. So we're good to go there. So now we can run a quick test. So on center shape. Yep, reference kiss, that's good. So this works still. So you gotta refresh the layers, it helps. Um, so we can do dealer's choice. So there's my dog bones, there it is. So now I'm set up where I can just push this button, bam, there it is. And then now I've got my 027 depth, my new make layer. Oh, see, what's that? What's that all about? So you selected this. Oh, I know what it is. It's selecting a number off the thing, but I bet you that number doesn't exist. See, see how much fun we have? So we're gonna go back into the IDE. We're gonna go here and we're gonna see why. So now we gotta to go to this button. We have to see why this thing's angry. Oh, so I have a, uh, I have an if else thing. This is before I understood what case true and select case. It'd be a lot easier to do a select case here. So I just need to add this to the list. So it basically didn't find it and it caused a little bit of a, a little hiccup. So I need to do another else if, so I'm just gonna grab, you know what, I'm just gonna, cause I want this um, and this, but I have to change it to else if again, Total noob when I was doing this. There's a little easier way to do things like this, but you know, it is what it is. So if list equals 027 depth, so that's the problem. It wasn't finding the 027 depth. So you go ahead and set Bando 90, create layer, blah, 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 blah. And then 
There we go. Welcome to the party, pal. We just gave birth to a new layer. Welcome. Yep, so now we have to compile. Mm. Oh, that's right, I didn't put else in front of it. There we go. So you wanna make sure it starts with if, and then you get an else if, so it just goes down the list until it finds the one that's true. And then, actually, we can bring this up. I know it's horrible. I don't do indents, but, you know, it's mine. Else if, and then else if. So it just finds the condition true. So we needed to add this condition. So that's what was throwing it off. There we go. So let's go back to the code, or I'm sorry, to the object. Make sure we select this. Oops, make, there you go. No, I don't want that. There you go. Run. Whose house? Run's house. You want send it. Make layer. 027 depth. There it is. Welcome. Got a new layer depth. Perfect. Let's make sure the old one works. Look at that, huh? Nice. So I see something I could do as well, and I think I'm going to have to add that later. Every time I do something like I want to add um, another layer, like let's say I want to add this 1024 stud hole, and I hit make layer, you can see where nothing happens here until I hit refresh. I can take this functionality in this button and add it to the last thing that each of these buttons do in order to refresh this automatically. Even if send it is closed and I add a layer, it will actually under the hood fill it. And then when I open send it, it'll actually be full. So um, because I also have it when it initializes, one of the things that I do with send it when it initializes is it grabs, it loads this automatically with what's on the page. So um, in the, in this objects here. So when this thing first fires up, it reads what's here and loads it. But I can go ahead and hit these buttons with this not even open and it will fill this, or even if it is open, it'll fill it automatically and refresh. So uh, I need to add that functionality because that way, every time I push a button, it will fill it and I don't have to hit refresh layers and add it. So anyway, I'm going to do that later. Something I got to add in. Anyway, that's it for this. Just um, now I got layers of machine tweaked a little bit better. It's going to make me a little more efficient. Half a percent makes a difference. That's all the, it's all the, it's all the casino needs to win. The house advantage is usually a half of a percent, but over time, it adds up to big things. So uh, making these things a little easier, these buttons, making sure everything's all squared away, wired tight. So it's going to be great. So, all right. So that's it. If you have any questions, um, I'm still trying to break out some of these macros. Uh, I want to make sure, I want to kind of get the dupe checker is my next one. I'm going to break this one out, put it on the site, you know, dieselbuilt.com. And um, there's a couple other ones, maybe page turner. I know people are kind of excited about page turner. So, um, so something like that, try to get some of these up on the website, you know, have them up there for you guys to be able to, to acquire. So anyway, um, but if that's it, if you have any questions, hit me up. Check, check the